today I want to talk about uh, Microsoft Teams speeding apps once again. I want to show you a short uh, demo how to handle with the uh, meeting lifecycle and just requesting some emoji feedback at the end of a meeting together with an adaptive card and the universal action model. Quick introduction about me. My name is Markus Möller. I'm a Microsoft 365 developer expert. Since this month, I'm also a Microsoft MVP and I'm based in Germany and work there for Abenard. You can find me on Twitter as well as where my blog posts, uh, where my blog. Let's directly jump in to the demo. So we want to uh, request some feedback when the meeting ends and therefore we first have to create a meeting. So let's quickly add a meeting. What we always need for Teams meeting apps, uh, you might know from my last sample I demonstrated here uh, two months back or so, we always need a participant. Yeah? This is always important. And in this case, it's more important because we also want to see later how feedback gets aggregated. So let's invite uh, one of my buddies here. And then let's save and send the meeting. The next thing we have to do now is we have to install the app to this special or specific meeting. Therefore, we go into the meeting, we add a tab here. Um, teams already suggest us some uh, meeting apps which are optimized for meetings, but these are some samples that work with uh, the so-called uh, in-meeting experience. Uh, teams does not detect a bot who is dedicated for this, and so I have to go the long way over more apps for my org. And there we have our meeting feedback board. We now have to add it to a meeting. This is our PNP demo meeting, so we are good to go. What we already see here is that we added the bot to the chat, so he's able to post there. We will later see how we achieve that because this is really important that this works. Um, otherwise, um, we cannot do what we want to do. Now we have to join the meeting. I turn off my microphone, but don't want to talk anymore. Not in that meeting. Now, of course, we can wait for others to join, but we can also simply exit the meeting. And as we are the only one, the meeting will officially end after we left. This is what we see. We have an attendance report, and there is our meeting feedback. This is an adaptive card sent by the bot and there we can simply click on the feedback which we want how did we like it okay we are a bit conservative we are not really sure about this two seconds meeting and then we have now <clears throat> we have voted so we can only vote once this is achieved with the adaptive card universal action model that i cannot vote once again but what we still have is we still have that guy here, um, this is our, our buddy Klaus Clausen, who is also invited to the meeting. He can also go to the meeting or can also see it now in the chat. There, he still has the other adaptive card, the, the, the initial one where he can give his meeting. Maybe he was totally embarrassed about this meeting and he gives a different feedback. And there we now have our summed up uh, feedback. Yeah, so we are see we already have one who was not really, uh, yeah, uh, really happy about this, and this was the feedback of Klaus, and this is the sum up. Okay, nothing more to demo here, but maybe only one thing, which I will also show you later in the slides again, is um, this refresh of the card is also in an, an action that is done automatically, but you can also enforce this. Um, yeah, we have only the German version, Karte Aktualisieren. I think I have to switch my browser, then I can also show you in, uh, here's the one in English, um, there we have the refresh card. This is what we have to care for, yeah, because uh, we need really need to care for if this button is pressed, that uh, it not, uh, that we have voted or not, yeah, and this we will check in the code later on. But I think that's all what I wanted to show. Simple solution, but I think um, 
was to maybe implement in even production scenarios. So let's flip back to the slides and explain how this was achieved. First, what we need, we need a Teams channel enabled Azure bot. We need, as we have seen, a meeting with at least one participant in there. Then we need permissions to access the chat. So the bot is able to port this card. Um, this is still in preview, this stuff. So we need uh, to have the client uh, uh, developer preview enabled. And uh, yeah, uh, as a sum up, the Teams bot, bot application also needs to um, be implemented, of course. And then we have specific uh, manifest stuff, which uh, represents the above prerequisites also. How does this look like? This is an, an extract of the manifest. And what we have is what's really important here. We need the groups chat scope. And we also need here the application permissions online meeting read basic chat. This is here sufficient. We have no app registration in the back also. This is sufficient to enable the team spot to write to the chat. But if we omit that, we cannot, and then the app doesn't work. And we have seen that, uh, that I added the meeting feedback to the chat once I installed the app. So how does the bot work? We have the on event uh, activity here, which is fired uh, when an event takes place. So uh, the sample code is partially taken from a Microsoft sample where they uh, they're, where they find the same code in a different and a more uh, generic uh, in a more generic hook. Um, so officially, this is not really necessary. Yeah, this question in the if uh, sentence. But what's of course necessary is to check if the activity name is either meeting start. In that case, we want to do nothing, or if it's the activity name is meeting end. And in that case. We are simply posting our initial adaptive card to the chat. Nothing else. That was the beginning of the demo. Next is how does the card look like? I had to shorten it up a bit, but uh, I think I can explain. Um, the first thing what we see is the so-called refresh action. Yeah, and here two things are really important. The first thing is we need to have a word to really detect. Uh, if this action or another one was fired. And we also, what we need to store here inside is we need to store all the user IDs of the voted persons so that the team's uh, chat when rendering the card already detects, hey, the user in front of the screen, did he already vote? So did, do I have to refresh the card or not? Yeah. And then the rest is, uh, I only have one action here. And this is that one. Uh, and this is only that one. I, and originally I have five. If I, if I would scroll down, and they are only simply rendering my uh, my emoji um, pictures. And they have a, a dedicated uh, word again. So world one, two, three, and so on. And the feedback object, uh, which I store in the background also to know, hey, in which meeting am I? And, uh, and so on and so forth, what I need for that. We have seen this it was the initial card how it was loaded um, the first time the bot sent it to the chat. Once we click on uh, one of the uh, icons, we come back to the uh, to the bot, and there we are in the in, in on invoke activity. And here, a quite simple switch. Yeah, so uh, we we are checking first uh, about the word. So already voted was the refresh action. We do not have it here. We have the invoke action, and then we have the other. Um, they have, we have the other five votes, and depending if it was voted one, two, three, or and so on, then we simply increase the votes and put it to our feedback object, which we store in the back of the adaptive card, so we can render uh, the the number of votes later on. This is all what we do, and then we simply send the updated card back to the chat, and uh, then uh, the user who did not vote will still, still see the initial one, and the users who did vote will see the results. The, re the refresh card is handled slightly different, slightly different only. Yeah, here we are. We now see what uh, what happens when we have the verb already voted. Yeah, so we uh, request the feedback. And then we have to check 
if the user who fired this action really already voted or not. Now, this is a double check. Here we can detect if uh, the user has an automatic uh, refresh or did he maybe call this refresh card action I just showed you. Yeah? And to circumvent or to, to avoid that he cannot vote, although he didn't do, I'm doing that. And if everything is fine, then I will simply send the, I called it disabled card, and the disabled card is the version where I already see the results. And this is what we return back. And to see once again what I'm talking about, here's the disabled card, the results. And that one was the action about how to refresh a card, what you can do manually. Yeah, simple. That was from my side. As you always know, um, at the very end, I'm posting my resources. So I have one blog post on that topic. I have a PMP sample um, delivered for that. And there's also some Microsoft documentation on Teams meeting events. And that's it from my side. Thank you. Back to you, David. Awesome. Thank you, Mark. Very, very cool implementation of this. Very useful, practical, well done. Uh, thank you for sharing that and uh, uh, sharing your blog post as well. Uh, very valuable. Mm -hmm.